So what we're going to do here is work through the exact same problem that we did in class this week. However, instead of making the simplifying assumption, we're actually going to solve for the value of x using the quadratic equation. This is the problem we were looking at. We were given a balanced chemical equation. We were given the value of k, and we were given some information about what was included in that flask. Notice our values were given to us in moles, and so we want to have molarity in our ice table, so we actually have to use the volume to convert to molarity of each of those substances, and we can put in our initial um, concentrations of our N2 and O2. Note there's no mention of the NO, so we actually put a zero in there. And then what we look at is the change row, and we base that change on the balanced chemical equation, the stoichiometry from the balanced equation. And so for every mole of N2 I lose, I'm also going to lose a mole of O2 or a molecule or mole, however you want to look at it. I'm going to lose the same amount of both of those, and I'm going to gain twice as much of the NO. The temperature is not particularly relevant to the actual calculation, other than to let us know that the K value was measured at 2000 Kelvin, and our experimental conditions are also at 2000 Kelvin, and that's really all we have to worry about is were things done at the same temperature. Now we get to our equilibrium row by simply adding up the initial row and the change row for each of the columns. And so now we know the equilibrium concentrations, but we have them in terms of x, and we want to know the numerical value of those. And this is where we're going to use the quadratic. So after getting our equilibrium concentrations with respect to x, we can write the law of mass action. And once we do that, then we can actually plug in what we know, what is exactly in those equilibrium uh, row cells, and plug them in for the various concentrations. Note that I have 2x in here, and I square it. These are for two different reasons. The 2x tells us about the stoichiometric ratios between changes in concentration. The squared is part of the law of mass action, so I still have to put 2x inside the square. These are separate um, parts of the problem. On the bottom, I put my N2 concentration, which is 0 0.250 minus x, and 0 0.430 minus x for the O2 concentration and the K value we were given. Now, we did the same problem in class, and it was at this point we said, well, I'm not going to worry about these x's. I'm going to assume that x is much, much smaller than 0 0.250. And we did find out that that was true, and that would be a reasonable assumption. But I want to show you how to solve the quadratic and show you that you get um, virtually the same answers for both of them. So what we want to look at is I've got to figure out and manipulate all of this equation here so that I can use the quadratic equation. And the thing I have to remember is that when I use the quadratic equation, I've got to get 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And so in order to have to be able to use the quadratic formula, I have to have it in this kind of format. I have to have a coefficient in front of the x squared term, a coefficient in front of the x term, and then our last number there with no x's at all. Once I get it into this format, in this very specific order, then I can take these um, coefficients and plug them into my quadratic equation to solve for my answer. So what I'm going to do now is actually some algebra it has nothing to do with chemistry other than it's for a chemistry problem, but we're going to go through how we kind of rearrange everything to be able to get it into this format. So if you're used to manipulating algebraic equations and you know how to use the quadratic, you can probably skip ahead a little bit if math is maybe not your strong suit and you're not quite sure how to manipulate things. Please watch this. Please pause as needed. I am doing this without notes. I'm doing this live so that you can see. Um, I can basically walk you through the entire process as I work through this problem as well. So feel free to pause, um, rewind as you need to to make sure you understand how I'm getting the numbers that I have. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually simplify everything that's in my equation right now. There's nothing I can really can do with the number on the left here, so I'm just going to rewrite that as is. I am going to simplify the numerator a little bit because I don't want to forget that that squared term goes with everything inside the parentheses or the brackets here. So I'm going to rewrite that as 4x squared. And then on the bottom, I actually have to go through and use the FOIL method, or first, outer, inner, last, to set up or solve this, um, this calculation. So I'm going to take my 0 0.250, times it by 0 0.430, and I end up with 0 0.1075. So that gets the two first terms. 
and then I'm going to do the outer terms, which will be the 0.250 and the x. So I have minus 0.250x, and then I have my inner terms, which will be 0.430x, plus my last term, which is minus x and minus x. So a negative times a negative is positive, and x times x is x squared. So now I have everything on the denominator expanded. Now what I need to do is to move all of the denominator that I have here up to multiply by this value here. So now I'm going to go through and multiply my numbers. So I have 4.10 times 10 to the minus fourth times 0.1075 and I get 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth and then I'm going to do two things in this step, okay? So watch out here carefully. I'm going to combine these terms. And the reason I can combine these two terms is because they're both written with respect to x. I cannot combine terms that are with respect to x squared or no x or and x all together. But because these are both with respect to x, I can combine them. And so I get 0.250 minus 0.250 minus 0 0.430, and I end up with minus 0 0.680, which I multiply by 4.10 times 10 to the minus fourth, and I end up with a minus 2.78, oh, so that's actually going to be a 9 there, 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth, X. I still have the X in there. That hasn't gone anywhere. I was just doing the math. So just to recap here, I combined these two terms. Okay, combined those two and then multiplied the result of that, which was negative 0 0.680 times the 4.1 times 10 to the minus 4th. And then I got the 2.79 times 10 to the minus 4th X. Now, the last step is a little bit easier. I can take my x squared term here and multiply it by the 4.10 times 10 to the minus fourth. So we have plus 4.10 times 10 to the minus fourth x squared. And remember that all of this is still equal to 4x squared. We didn't do anything with our numerator up here in this step. We just simply moved everything that was in the denominator, multiplied it by the number on the left side, now what we need to do is we've got to remember we're still trying to get to this format. I need to get 0 equal to something in for x squared, a coefficient times x, and our value there. So what we're going to do is actually rearrange this equation so that when we do, we get something that looks like what we have here. Now, I can either take the 4x squared to the left, or I can take everything that's on the left to the right. And that's what I'm going to do, because I notice that the number here, the coefficient in front of x squared on the left side is really small. And over here, we've got a fairly large number relative to that. So if I take my 4x squared over here, I'm going to end up with a negative in front of my x squared. And I don't like dealing with that. So I'm going to take everything over here, and when I do, that means the, the coefficient in front of x squared is going to still be positive. So I'm going to start with my 0 equals 4x squared. And I'm, as I rewrite this, or as I move these things from the left side of the equation to the right side, I'm actually going to write them in a slightly different order so we can group some things together and get us a little bit closer to looking like the format that we wanted in to use the quadratic. So I have 4x squared minus 4.10 times 10 to the minus fourth. And then I have my x term minus 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth x. There's an x squared there too. Okay. And then I'm going to, that, so that'll be an addition because it's a subtraction on the left. And so that means it's going to be an addition on the right. And this is an addi a sub addition on the left, so it will be a subtraction on the right. So minus 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth. And when I go back and look at the value of, of my coefficients in front of x squared terms, what I see is I have a 4, and I have 4 times 10 to the minus 4th. And what I see is that this amount here is going to just get lost in the significant figures. So I'm actually going to only have 4x squared plus 2.79 times 10 to the minus 4th x. 
minus 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth. So now what I've done is I've set this up so that now what my formula here, my equation here, is similar to what I have up here. I have a coefficient in front of x squared, a coefficient in front of x, and my last value. I have the same thing here. And so what I see is that a is going to be equal to 4, b is equal to 2.79 times 10 to the minus 4, and c is equal to minus 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now remember, you've got to take the minus sign in there. Notice up here we have two plus signs. So if there's a minus sign in there, that means that number is actually negative. So now that we know these numbers, now we can plug these into our quadratic equation. And when we do that, we can solve for x. Now we want to go about solving our quadratic. And so I'm just going to copy over the information that we kind of finished up with on the previous page of looking at our value of a, which is equal to 4, the value of b, which is 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth, and c, which is equal to minus 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth. And then I'm going to write down my quadratic formula just to make it a little bit easier so I can plug in my numbers. So I have x equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now it's a matter of plugging in all of my numbers into the quadratic. Now I want to go back and plug in all those values into the quadratic. So I have x equal to minus b, so minus 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth, squared minus 4 times 4, because that happens to be the value of a here, times c, which is minus 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth, all over 2a. And we'll get two answers here for x, but one of them will be nonsensical because it will give us an answer such as a negative equilibrium, something that can't physically happen. So it's easy, usually pretty easy to pick out what the right root is, what the right answer is for x. So now what I'm going to do is go back and actually, whoops, I forgot to put my 4 in there. So put my 4 in there for a. And I'm actually going to solve this in part. So if you're familiar, comfortable with working with the quadratic and algebra is easy for you, then you probably don't want to sit through this entire video. However, if you're struggling with it and you're not sure how to kind of solve this kind of big monstrosity, then I'm going to work through it in a couple of steps. So I'm going to start here with my x. And for right now, I'm going to leave this as is, 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth. I have to put my plus and minus there because I'm going to have to do both of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the square root. And what I'm actually going to do first is solve for everything that's under that square root symbol. So what I have is 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth. And I'm going to square that minus 4 times 4 times a negative 4.41 times 10 to the minus fifth. And when I do that, I get the number 7.06 times 10 to the minus fourth. And that will be over my 8 that's on the bottom for 2a. Now, I can say minus 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth plus or minus. I'm going to take the square root of that number and I find that I get 0 0.0266 over 8. I can't simplify anything with the 8 until I do the numerator, because notice this 8 is a denominator for the entire equation, uh, and we don't want to forget that. So now, for my solutions, what I find is I'm going to have two x's. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go through and do the positive here. So I'm going to do the plus part here. So I say minus 2.79 times 10 to the minus fourth plus, 
0.0266 equals, and then I divide that value by 8, and I get x equal to 0, 0 0.00329. And then for my other value of x, I'll actually use the subtraction. So I have minus 2.79 times 10 to the minus 4th minus 0 0.0266 divided by 8, and I get the same, or similar number here, sorry, not the same number, but it's minus 0 0.00336. And so when I go back to look at x values, what I'm going to see is that I'm not going to be subtracting a negative number there, because that would result in me having a negative value on the uh, product side where I didn't have anything to begin with. And we know that's nonsensical uh, because we cannot have a negative concentration at equilibrium. And so we say, well, that's not the correct route. It's the 0 0.00329 that we are going to be using. So the value we found for x was x equal to 0 0.00. 3, 2, 9. And when I look at the number that I found without simplifying and the number that I found with simplifying, which is 3.32 times 10 to the minus third, I see that I don't see a huge difference in those values. So a lot more work without a real substantial change in the value. Now that's true because our k value is very small. If we had a larger k value and you did it with, with, both with the simplifying assumption and with the quadratic, you could see very, or you will see very different numbers for x. So this only works when x or k is very small and we still have to compare x to the number from which it was subtracted whenever we make that simplifying assumption to make sure that it's a, in fact a valid assumption. Now I can go through and find my equilibrium concentrations by simply using the value of x with what I have in the equilibrium row. And so when I do the first one, I take 0 0.250 minus x, which I'm using the x that I calculated um, using the quadratic, and I end up with equilibrium equal to 0 0.247 for the oxygen, and this is in molarity, for my oxygen I end up with 0 0.430 minus 0 0.00329 and I end up with 0 0.427 molar and then for my nitrogen monoxide I end up with 2 times 0 0.00329 for a value of 0 0.00658 or 6.58 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And for our final answers, our equilibrium concentrations, we see that there's actually no difference in the equilibrium concentration of N2 or O2 based on whether I use the simplifying assumption or whether I use the quadratic. And for the NO, we see only a minor difference in that concentration. And so this shows you that we can do the quadratic. We can always do the quadratic, but sometimes it's okay to make that simplifying assumption, make it easier on ourselves, make the math a little bit easier.